Hi guys, this again is Sebastian from Coding the Smart Way and today in uh, this video tutorial I'd like to introduce you to a new framework which is called Nuxt and um, by using the Nuxt framework which is built on top of uh, Vue.js um, we are able to build server rendered Vue.js application. So Vue.js is uh, one of the top um, web development front-end frameworks this year because it makes developing single page applications really easy. It has a very steep learning curve and um, so it's under the top frameworks and uh, Nuxt is now built on top and by enabling you to build server rendered applications with Vue, um, you are able to, to really increase the performance of your application and uh, how this is achieved and how you can make use of Nuxt um, is part of that video, so let's get started and see how to install and how to build your own project by using Nuxt. So getting started with a new Nuxt uh, project is very easy because to initiate a new project we can um, use the view command line interface and the view command line interface is available by using the view command and if you have not installed the view CLI <coughs> yet on your system you first need to do so and uh, you can do so by using the node package manager command npm and uh, say npm install um, minus g to make sure that it is installed globally on your system and then uh, the package name is view-cli um, that is a command you need to execute in order to install um, the view command line interface on your system. I have already done so, so I don't need to execute this command right now, but can move on um, now with the initiation of a new Nuxt uh, project by using the view command. And in this case, I need to say view um, in it to specify that I would like to initiate a new project. And then the template I need to uh, use is called Nuxt slash uh, starter. And uh, finally, I need to specify what's the name of my project. And in uh, that case, it's my Nuxt app. Okay, hit return. And now the Nuxt starter template is downloaded automatically and um, here I'm asked um, to choose a project name. I leave it uh, to the default setting, the project description as well, um, the author, and uh, okay, now we are done. Um, the template has been downloaded and a new project folder um, with the name My Next App has been created. And now here you can see that our the next steps now we need to take. First, I need to change into that newly created project folder by uh, saying cd my next app. And then inside that folder, I need to um, execute one time the npm install command to make sure that all uh, project dependencies are downloaded and installed into the node um, underscore modules folder within my project. So let's execute npm install and you can see it just takes a few seconds to complete. It downloads now every, everything what's needed here and uh, um, is executing the installation afterwards. Okay, here we are. You can say everything has been downloaded and installed successfully. And now we can run the first test and start up the uh, Nux development web server by using npm run dev and hit return. And now you can see it's uh, starting up the server and uh, here it's saying, okay, now the application is uh, running locally on my system on port 3000 so we can um, change to the browser here and access the application and you can see uh, this is a response we are getting back the next application is running and uh, is um, is ready to be extended okay next let's take a quick look at uh, the project structure 
which has been uh, created by initializing our application. And I have already opened up the project folder here in my um, my text editor, which is Atom. And you can see the uh, product structure as uh, a tree here on the left side. And let's explore uh, the project structure step by step. And you can see um, we have a bunch of subfolders included here. And uh, if I open up the first subfolder, which is called Assets, you can see, and that is very handy here, um, in all those subfolders, a readme .md file is placed. And if I click on that file, you can see it gives you a quick hint um, of what um, this folder is used for. And here for the Assets folder, you can read it here. Uh, this is um, intended to contain your uncompiled assets. And uh, this means your less your SAS files or JavaScript files, which you do not want to be compiled by the framework. So that's the assets folder here and we can move on. Uh, the components folder, I think that's, uh, that's um, pretty much clear because uh, that's uh, the place where you can store all your view um, JS component files um, and um, it says here is this directory of course is not required so if you do not want to use components here in your project of course you can delete it and it does not need to stay part of the um, uh, project structure here you can here see as well a logo.view component is implemented and that's the component which is used here in the default um, Nux template to, to print out um, the logo we saw before. Okay, and then there is the layouts folder here. You can see again a readme file. Um, that folder is containing um, your application layouts and the layouts are a special um, concept of Nuxt. With the middleware folder, um, here we can place um, yeah, let's say middleware code, which is basically a custom function, which is uh, executed before the page is rendering out to the browser. Then we have the node underscore modules folder, and uh, that uh, folder is containing all the dependencies which have um, been installed earlier when executing the npm install command. So uh, this folder is nothing you um, you have to work in when implementing our application. Then we have the pages subfolder and the pages subfolder um, contains your Nuxt application views and routes. And what's special about Nuxt is that it just scans through that directory and scans all the .view files which are placed inside this directory and uh, automatically creates corresponding um, a corresponding router configuration, and uh, this is um, this is very very handy because this is preventing us from needing to create uh, to create the router configuration of our application explicitly. And we will see how this is working um, later on in this video when we are going to add some pages to the application and uh, then we will see um, how we can access those pages by automatically created routes. Okay, so then the plugins folder is here on the plugins uh, directory is containing um, JavaScript plugin um, files that you just want to run before um, your application is, um, is, is created. Then there is a static folder. Um, the static folder is containing it just static files of your project and all of those files are um, mapped to your um, default root. Um, for example, you can see it's containing the fav icon uh, file here. Then the last subfolder here is uh, store and uh, the store directory is intended to contain um, implementations of uh, 
of Vuex store. So if you would like to uh, use um, uh, the Vuex uh, extension in your project, you can place uh, the store implementation files uh, right here inside that folder. And uh, by, by creating code in, in that folder here, um, the Vuex framework is automatically activated um, for your application. Okay, so if you do not uh, want to use a Vuex in your application, you can simply delete that store folder. As you can see here, it's not required and you can um, delete it and then uh, it's, it's gone and uh, you do not need to use it. Okay. So beside the subfolders here, you can find two configuration files with, which are um, essential to our project. Uh, the first one here is the package.json file. Um, you can see it here. Um, there are two things here you can find if you take a look inside that file. Um, you can find all the uh, dependencies of our application. And um, yeah, that's basically the list here. And we have installed those dependencies by using the npm install command. And then you have the uh, scripts section here um, where you find a definition of scripts. For example, if we say npn run dev, the uh, dev script is um, activated and executed and it just called the next command here. And uh, you can also see um, we have a build a script defined, a start a script. We will um, make use of those scripts later on. Um, also the uh, generate script here and um, you will see um, what's the purpose of those scripts later on in that video when we are going to use um, those scripts. Okay, then there is another configuration file and that's the nuxt.config.js file. And that file is containing all the configuration settings which are needed for uh, the server rendering basically. And um, you can see it's including code for a default configuration. For example, it's containing um, the um, the header attributes which are um, generated and are um, included in the HTML output of our application. Here you can see it's setting the title information in the HTML header section. It's using some meta um, tags and also a link tag to, to point to the FAF icon. And um, there are many more options um, for a configuration here in that file. Um, if you would like to have an overview of configuration op options here, um, you can go to the uh, website, which is available here at nuxtjs.org and take a look here in the guide um, in the section configuration where you will find a detailed configuration of all the options which are available and which can be included in the um, configuration file. Okay, so as already explained, um, Nuxt is uh, doing an um, implicit router configuration for us. And in the next step, I'd like to add two more pages to our application. And I, I'd like to connect both pages to um, two new routes. So uh, one page should be um, made visible if the user um, is going to access the home uh, route, as you can see here. And another page should be made visible if the user accesses home slash about. Okay, so to do so, let's go back to our code editor and open up the pages. Um, directory and now we are start to add two new files um, in that directory. So to add those files I first need to create a new subfolder within pages and I'm naming that subfolder home and within that empty subfolder now I'm going to add a file which is uh, called index.view and another file with uh, the name about 
dot view. And as you maybe can imagine, the uh, content of the file index.view, the component which is implemented here, um, is executed automatically if the user accesses a home route. And the uh, view component um, implemented in about.view is um, executed and uh, displayed if the user accesses home slash about. Okay, so let's uh, start with the implementation. First, we are going to implement index.view. Okay, so let's start with implementing the uh, view components here in index.view and in about.view. And I only want to print out a simple text information so that the user gets the feedback which route um, is accessed. And to do so, let me include um, a default implementation of a view component. I have a snippet here so I can insert it very quickly. And uh, within the template code here, I now only need one element and that's an um, h1. Okay. And the text I'm going to print out is this is home. Okay. So let's take that code here, copy it, insert it in about, and this time we are saying this is home slash about. Okay, let's switch back to the browser and try to access home. And now you can see it's a wable. It's printing out um, the code which is returned from uh, the component which um, has been implemented in um, home index.view. And if I'm going to access home slash about, you can see we are getting the text back from the component which has been implemented in about.view. So as you can see, the routing configuration is active. Um, we um, did not need to include any um, configuration code for the, for the router. Um, Next is just scanning the pages directory and the structure with subfolders in that directory and is making the corresponding routes available automatically. So the Nuxt framework handles all the UI rendering um, of your project and um, as you can see here we have already um, been working with the uh, development web server. We have uh, started um, the development server up to make our application available here on port 3000 on our local machine. And uh, in this case, the Nuxt framework is already operating in a server rendered mode, um, automatically. Uh, and this simply means that all the views and pages um, the user accesses in the browser are pre-rendered on server side and delivered as uh, ready-made HTML files to the client and uh, this server rendering, of course, means that your application is um, is loading a lot faster on the client because uh, there needs to uh, needs not to be any rendering process, any interpretation of JavaScript code um, be executed on the client side. It's all um, done on server side, and the HTML code is ready to be rendered out in the browser. So in the next step, let's um, leave the um, um, development server mode and see how we can start up the next application for use in production. Okay, so let's first um, stop the development server here. And now we need to, to run the npm run the build script here. And this makes sure that um, all the um, building steps and the uh, generating of files, routes, and so on is happening um, one time now. And um, if the process has been executed successfully and all the resources are there, we can now continue to run the start script, which is done by npm run start and that is starting up the web server now in production mode and the application is um, again hosted on port 3000 and you can see it here it's available 
all our routes are accessible, so home, and about as well. Okay, so beside running your Nuxt application in a server rendered mode, there's another great option for deploying your Nuxt um, application. And uh, this option is to generate static HTML files so that you can deploy your application just to any static file hosting service you would like. And uh, how to do so? Um, let's uh, let me demonstrate in the following. And uh, again, we need to say npm run here, and this time to generate a static HTML files for our project, we need to say or to execute the uh, generate script. So it's npm run generate. Uh, hit return and you can see the generation process is going to start here. It's um, again building our application. It takes a second here to complete. Okay, here we are and now you can see it's generating um, static HTML files um, it, uh, for, for every route in our application. It starts with the default route, it's generating the index.html file, then it's uh, going um, to um, the home and the home slash about route and generating the static content. And now the static content is available in a folder um, which is called dist. So I can change into that folder and uh, just take a look inside and here we can see it's containing the static content it has the index.html file it has a home um, directory i can change into that and display the content here as well and here we can see it's uh, containing the index.html file for our home route and now i can change into the about subfolder here as well and i will find another index.html file um, which contains the static content for the home slash about route. Okay, so now as the static content for our application um, is fully generated, let's deploy it to a static, a static file hosting service and the service I'd like to use in the following is available at search.sh and this service is simply providing uh, a very simple to use um, uh, static web publishing service um, for free and which can be controlled um, on the command line. And the first thing I need to do is install the search command line interface tool. And you can see it here, it needs to be done by using npm install again. And the package which is containing the search command line interface is called simply search. Okay, back to our command line here and let's install it. npm install minus g to install it globally on our system. Uh, search. Okay. So now it's downloading the package and the dependencies here, as you can see, um, installing it on my machine. It takes a second to complete. Okay, here we are. Installation has been completed successfully and now um, I'm able to execute the search command right within my dist folder where my static file content um, has been generated into. Okay, so let's hit search. Um, it's asking me uh, here for my user account. I have already a search account. If you um, haven't created an account yet, you need to uh, uh, specify your email address, uh, assign a password and so on here at the command line to create that account first. And then it's asking me for the project path where my static content is in and as I have executed search right within my dist folder. It's already proposing um, this folder here so I can hit return. And uh, then I need to uh, specify uh, a subdomain name. Um, let's say next test um, a one 
.search.sh. And as you can see, this domain is available and it's now uploading my static content here. And uh, here you can see I can now take this URL, go back to my browser, pass in that URL, and here you can see my application is available. I can check if my home route is available and at home slash about is available as well. And you can see everything is working as expected. Now the content is not generated on the server. It has been generated on my machine first and then um, um, has been outputted static HTML files and I uploaded those static content to search. And now what you can see here is just the plain static HTML code, which is available. Okay, this was Sebastian from CodingTheSmartWay.com. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you did enjoy my video uh, tutorial this time. If you do like my videos, please subscribe to my channel um, here on YouTube. And don't forget to visit my website at CodingTheSmartWay.com. And I hope to see you in the next video. So stay tuned. Bye.